I promise that if you follow these two ICT steps in this video, your win rate is going to skyrocket. First step is finding out the bias, and this can already increase our win rate by a good amount. Now, finding out the bias is easy enough. We can use previous days high and previous days low, PDA rates, and a draw on liquidity. But if you combine them together, it makes it way higher probability. And I will show you how. But first, we want to talk about each concept individually. Let's start with previous days high and previous days low. I've already mentioned previous days high and previous days low a lot of times before. We're just looking at where the previous day closed. Notice that price failed to close below the previous day's low, making the target for the following day previous day's high. Then price closed above previous day's high, which means the target for the next day is the new previous day's high, and that just keeps going. And there are some times where price failed to close beneath previous day's low within this uptrend, meaning that previous day's high is then to draw on liquidity for the next following day. The second concept is a draw on liquidity. A draw on liquidity in simple terms is where we think price is going to go. But wait, doesn't that make previous days high and previous days low than a draw on liquidity? Well, first I will just show you some examples of a draw on liquidity so you can get the understanding of where it is. There are mainly four areas where price is mostly attracted towards. And the first one is low resistance liquidity, because retail traders see this area as a form of support then smart money is going to target these areas because retail traders have put their stop losses beneath these lows. And the same counts for the next draw on liquidity, which is eagle highs, as retail traders also see this area as resistance, so they're going to put their stop losses above these equal highs. The third draw on liquidity is external and internal range liquidity, because we know price is moving from internal to external and then from external to internal range liquidity. So if we know price is moving from internal range liquidity, then we know that price is most likely going to reach for external range liquidity. And if price is moving from external range liquidity, then we know price is most likely going to move down into internal range liquidity. And the last draw on liquidity is previous days high and previous days low. So yes, the previous days high and previous days low are indeed a draw on liquidity. But why do we even need a draw on liquidity in the first place? It's because it can provide key information into where price is heading. This gives us a massive advantage because we can anticipate whether price will move higher or lower. Having this information significantly boosts our win rate. Without a draw on liquidity, we'd essentially be trading with a 50-50 chance of success. Here's an example of all the drawn liquidities on the daily chart. The last and final concept is PDRAs. And PDRAs is the trickiest one, but at the same time, not really. And here's why. So we can use PDRAs to figure out the bias by first looking at where price is delivering from. And if it's from a PDRA, we know price is most likely going to reach a point of interest before making a reversal. And when price reaches that point of interest, which is likely another PDRA or a high or low, and reverses from there, it will then target another point of interest, which is probably another PDRA or another high or low. And that just keeps going. And this is a bit hard to understand with just words, but my chart example is probably going to make it easier to grasp. We can see that price reached into a discount of this large dealing range where there also was a fair value gap, and it was only one candle which made it down into this discount, giving us more confirmation. So as we discussed before, when price reached another PDRA, price is most likely going to reach a point of interest from there, which is either a high or another PDRA. And right here, we can see we have the nearest high, and we can see price reaches that high, and then from there reaches another point of interest, which is this fair value gap. And then from there, we can see price creates a market structure shift, which gives us more confirmation that price is now moving to a more significant point of interest, such as the high of this dealing range. And we can see price reaches that high of the dealing range, which is a point of interest. So now price is most likely going to reach another point of interest. And if we mark out this dealing range from this low up to this high, we can see price entered the discount and reached into this fair value gap. And when price reaches from that point of interest, 
we then know price is going to reach another point of interest, which was this high, and that just keeps going. But the tricky part is to figure out which Peter Ray price is going to make the reversal from. And I have some key takeaways which you must know. The first one is looking at a premium and a discount within a large range, as that's where we usually see price reach into a Peter Ray and from there move higher, as we could see for this example. Second is looking at multiple Peter Rays combined with each other, because then there's more areas of support to push price in that direction. For example, we can see right here that we have a normal fair value gap that is combined with a volume imbalance. And if we also look over to the left, we have an inversion fair value gap. So here we have multiple PDA rays to push price higher. Now that we have the first step checked off, we're going to move over to the next step, which is probably the most important one, which also is going to increase your win rate the most. And it is psychology. Now wait, don't click off the video yet, because I know you don't want to admit you need some sort of psychology advice, as we usually all do. But I have three criteria every trader must focus on. And the last one is really something, so stay tuned. But the best thing is that these three criteria are not even that difficult to implement to your trading style. First criteria is trading hesitation. And we experience trading hesitation because we're mostly afraid of losing and thinking too much about the outcome of the trade. Or you maybe have had previous losses, which may or may not relate to your current trading style, which is still affecting your trading. And don't worry, this is completely normal, as we don't want to lose money. But if you switch this perspective around, and you start being happy about a loss, because it's a learning opportunity, and also loving the outcome of the trade, then you're going to not hesitate as much as before. Also, cutting the amount you risk in half can help you gain confidence in your trading. And when you begin to notice an increase in your win rate and you're slowly starting to become profitable, risking that low capital, you can scale up to your normal size again. And I promise you will have a completely different perspective to it. Second step is not being emotional when you're in a trade as that can make you close your trades too early or adjust your stop loss to a higher level where your trade idea remains valid even if it gets stopped out. And these things significantly impact your win rate percentages, which you don't really want, right? Now, the way we can solve this or at least get more comfortable within a trade is by going off the charts while the trade is running. Or, as I mentioned before, try not to worry too much about losing. You can even adopt the mindset of expecting to lose since it's easy, making a win a surprise and a loss less disappointing. The key is to view each loss as a chance to learn. The best traders have experienced thousands of losses, but with each one they learn something new and improve. Training is not without losses, that is what we must remember. Finally, the last criteria is trading properly. That might sound obvious. But many traders struggle with this. By trading properly, I mean avoid overtrading, following your trading rules, accepting good losses, and trading under high probability conditions, etc. And this is hard to implement in your trading, because you may have some bad habits which is difficult to get rid of. And the advice I want to give you, in addition to everything mentioned above, is to build up your screen time, journal your trades, and put in the hard work.